Water, earth, fire, air. Long ago, the four nations lived together in harmony. Then everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Only the Avatar, master of all four elements, could stop them. But when the world needed him most, he vanished. I believe Aang can save the world. She'll be here any minute. But this is our pie show day, Iroh. <laughs> Do not worry, my friend. The director assured me this would only take a few minutes of our time. Just to confirm some details. And there she is. Gentlemen, so pleased to make your acquaintance. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Zong Ying, the director of the Ba Sing Se Players. Welcome to the Jasmine... As you know, the Ember Island Players production of The Boy in the Iceberg was said to have contained certain, let us say, historical inaccuracies. Oh, and given that the great former general's dear, dear nephew is about to become the new Fire Lord, well, it seemed obvious that the play needed a refresh. I am so proud of Zuko. Ah, yes, yes, as we all are. Which is why I wish to mount a brand new production. And who better to tell the tale, to set the record straight, if you will, than you three, who have seen it all. You could say that. No, oh, I have. And I did. And so, I entreat you, my dear, eminent, respected, wise, and, dare I say, more than a little handsome gentleman, to lavish upon me the tale of the Avatar from the beginning. From the beginning? If you please, I will listen and record for all posterity the real, true story. Not one embellishment. Not one! This should take no time at all, as you will speak freely, without interruption. Certainly not from me. I will be quiet as a lizard mouse. <laughs> Quieter. Mm-hmm. Ha-ha! <sighs> Very well. Allow me to begin. People often talk about the calm before the storm. But this story begins with the storm before the calm. And, oh, storm before the calm. How clever. My, don't you have a silver tongue? Do go on. Lizard mouse, lizard mouse. Thank you. Now, as I was saying, the storm before the calm. Caught in a storm, the Avatar found himself overwhelmed, as did Appa, and they plunged into the ocean. 
the Avatar and his bison remained in the ice for 100 years, until Katara and her brother Sokka discovered him. How could this boy in the iceberg possibly be the long-lost Avatar? At first, Sokka was suspicious, but Aang's charm and true nature eventually won him over. The three became fast friends, and Aang was welcomed by the people of the Southern Water Tribe. But soon, Aang would make a discovery that would set him back on the path to his destiny as the Avatar. Aang and Katara sprang a trap, endangering the village. Told to leave the village, Aang flew away on Appa, but saw that the trap had attracted a Fire Nation ship. He had to get back and help them. Aang returned to the village and faced Zuko. He surrendered so the Fire Nation would leave the village alone. Taken to Zuko's ship, Aang soon manages to escape imprisonment. to fight. I am Zuko, son of Ursa and Fire Lord Ozai, prince of the Fire Nation and heir to the throne. And you will be my prisoner. Did you see that? Aang! Are you okay? Hey, Katara. Hey, Sokka. Thanks for coming. Well, I couldn't let you have all the glory. After escaping from Prince Zuko, the Avatar excitedly flew his friends to the Southern Air Temple, the home he had run away from 100 years prior. He felt shame for abandoning his old mentor, Gyatso, and for running away from his responsibility. Aang entered the Air Temple Sanctuary, expecting to meet someone who could help him on his Avatar journey. Instead, he found Momo, a flying lemur who became Aang's friend. Upon exploring the air temple further, Aang made a startling discovery no. and was forced to confront a dark truth. All the air nomads, including Aang's friends and his mentor, had been wiped out by the Fire Nation. He became overwhelmed and entered the Avatar state, 
which would have led to disaster if not for Katara. And that's when Aang faced the hardest truth of all. He was the last of his people. The last airbender. He felt he needed the advice of the Avatar who'd come before him, Roku, but didn't know how to get it. So Aang and his friends continued on their journey. Soon after his return, Aang, Katara, and Sokka were captured by the Kyoshi warriors, thinking the heroes were Fire Nation spies. But once Aang proved he was the Avatar, he got royal treatment and a legion of fans. Oh yeah! The day started peaceful enough, but the quiet was shattered when Prince Zuko and his soldiers arrived and attacked the village. Sokka and Suki sprang into action to help. Oh no! Stop hiding behind these little girls, Avatar. They can't save you. I'm here, Zuko. So, you came out of hiding. Smart move, Avatar. Honor. to this place. These people got their town destroyed trying to protect me. It's not your fault. Let's get out of here. Suko will leave Kiyoshi Village to follow us. Appa! <laughs> yip yip! The Avatar and his friends then traveled to Omashu in search of his old friend Gumi. There, they were greeted by a wizened old man, who... Hey! Who are you calling wizened? <clears throat> As I was saying, the king of Omashu imprisoned Katara and Sokka. Aang would have to pass three tests and win a duel if he wanted to save his friends. Then, the king posed a final question. What is my name? Aang realized the king was none other than <laughs> Bumi himself. It was all for a purpose. Aang had to learn that you don't just wake up one day, especially after a hundred years, ready to challenge Fire Lord Ozai. But Aang had a challenge for you, did he not? Oh yes, indeed he did. Yippee! One we faced together. Get on this. Aang entered the spirit world for the first time. There, a large dragon showed him a temple devoted to Roku. Aang knew he had to go there. Hey, 
Levi, listen to me. Not in the mood to talk, I guess. Now I understand. You're the spirit of this forest. You're upset and angry because your home was burned down. When I saw the forest had burned, I was sad and upset. But my friend gave me hope the forest would grow back. <laughs> you see? Aang learned his lesson well, and figured out how to handle Hei Bai all by himself. Almost. But as was so often the case for Aang and his friends, the victory led to yet another challenge. Aang began having visions of a terrifying comet. Desperate to learn what it all meant, he sought to connect with his past life, Avatar Roku. And he knew just how. At a temple on a crescent-shaped island. But there was a catch. <laughs> Several, actually. He had to reach the island during the solstice, which was the very next day. And the real kicker? The island was in the Fire Nation. What? <laughs> what? His friends were thrilled to hear that. But it was a beautiful night to fly on Appa. So it wasn't all bad. Avatar's not going anywhere. He's coming with me. It's good to see you, Aang. What took you so long? I have something very important to tell you. Is it about that vision? The one of the comet? Yes. One hundred years ago, Fire Lord Sozin used that comet to begin the war. Sozin's comet will return by the end of this summer, and Fire Lord Ozai will use its power to finish the war once and for all. Aang, you must defeat the Fire Lord before the comet arrives. But I haven't even started learning waterbending. Not to mention earth and fire. If the world is to survive, you must learn these by summer's end. A great danger faces you at the temple. I can help you face the threat, but only if you are ready. I'm ready. Aang channeled Roku's spirit, and with the power of all the avatars, destroyed the temple and drove out the Fire Nation soldiers and the sages who had neglected their duties. Another close call for the avatar, yet it would not be the last. And soon Zuko himself would aid the avatar, even if it was for selfish reasons. But in a way, this set Zuko on a better path, did it not? You could say that.
captured by Admiral Zhao. Aang was taken to the Fire Nation stronghold. There he was chained and kept in a special cell. As night fell, a mysterious masked figure infiltrated the stronghold. After taking Zuko to safety, Aang returned to his friends and helped them get better. He had begun to wonder if he and Zuko had met under different circumstances. Would they have been friends? I imagine your nephew began wondering the same thing. Oh yes, but Zuko was still a long way from finding peace. And the Avatar was still a long way from visiting the Northern Water Tribe to learn waterbending from me. But in time, after more adventures and misadventures, they finally arrived. Finally having resolved their differences, Aang resumed Paku's waterbending training with Katara by his side. Suddenly, black snow began to fall. The Fire Nation had arrived to attack the Northern Water Tribe. Despite his best efforts, Aang was nearly overwhelmed by the Fire Nation Navy. They soon entered the city and continued their relentless attack. Here we go. No matter what Aang, his friends, or the Water Tribe's warriors did, they could not drive off the Fire Nation. Desperate for help, Aang thought to enter the spirit world to ask for guidance. <laughs> Yue took him to a place where he could speak to the spirits. Attention, please. Aang searched the spirit world for a spirit that could help. The spirits were in the pool before him in the spirit oasis. The spirits of the moon and ocean. However, Admiral Zhao reached them before Aang could, killed the spirit of the moon, and fled. Just when all hope was lost, Aang entered the Avatar state and merged with the spirit of the ocean to battle the Fire Nation. Meanwhile, someone else arrived on the scene, looking for Admiral Zhao. <sighs> I don't think so. to have me killed. Yes, I did. You're the blue spirit. 
an enemy of the Fire Nation. You freed the Avatar. I had no choice. You should have accepted your fear. You're a disgrace. Now that you're here, I'll see that I finish the job I started. Take my hand! Aang, along with the spirit of the ocean, saved us all that day. But his victory over the Fire Lord was by no means assured. In a way, his journey had barely begun. However, he now had one of the finest water-bending masters I'd ever known, Katara. And now, it was time to travel to the Earth Kingdom. It was time for Aang to learn earthbending. Iroh is a traitor, and your brother is a failure. I have a task for you. Pardon me. Aang and his friends went to Omashu in search of his old friend Bumi. The Fire Nation had taken the city, and there they encountered the resistance who were attempting to attack the Fire Nation governor's mansion. The governor's daughter, Mei, almost single-handedly defended against the attack, forcing Aang and the resistance to retreat to their underground hideout. That's when Aang found out, to his shock, that Bumi had surrendered the city. Determined to find and rescue Bumi, Aang convinced the resistance that the best way to help Omashu's citizens was to help them escape the city. The question was, how? Sokka's plan to fool the Fire Nation into thinking there was a Pentapox outbreak worked, and the citizens were able to flee Omashu. Unfortunately, they had an unexpected stowaway in the governor's infant son. The governor assumed the resistance had kidnapped his son and offered to exchange him for Bumi's freedom. All was going well until Azula arrived and suggested that she and May oversee the trade. Instead of a trade, this resulted in a battle between Aang and Azula, and some frustrating but wise words from King Bumi. The Avatar here? Well, this is my lucky day. Huh? Avatar, I am Princess Azula, and you will be my gift to my father, Fire Lord Ozai. Aang, 
Stop your blowing for a minute. I wasn't happy to learn that I'd only been pretending that I couldn't earthbend with all that was happening. But I was biding my time. I had to explain my strategy of neutral Jing, where you do nothing. You see, neutral Jing is the key to earthbending. It involves listening and waiting for the right moment to strike. Under the circumstances, I could not be his earthbending teacher. But I told him to look for someone who had mastered neutral Jing. And with that, I said goodbye to Aang, knowing we would see each other again, when the time was right. What? After Toph rejected Aang's request for her to be his earthbending teacher, he decided to get himself invited to the Beifong residence to try to convince her again. Toph wasn't too pleased to see Aang, and dinner did not go well. Even so, Toph still decided to visit Aang in his room to talk. Toph could sense that Jin Fu and his men were coming to capture her and Aang. And they did, demanding that her father pay a ransom for her return. Mr. Beifong went to the Rumble Arena, not only to pay for Toph's freedom, but with a plan to turn Aang over to the Fire Nation and collect the even greater bounty on the Avatar's head. Finally finding the courage to stand up to her father, Toph fought Jin Fu to free Aang. You can't hide behind your buddies anymore. It's just you and me now. Don't think I'll go easy on you, just because you're a little blind girl. You will leave my arena in defeat. This way, but the obedient little helpless blind girl that you think I am just isn't me. I love being an earthbender, and I'm really, really good at it. All this has made me realize something. I've let you have far too much freedom. From now on, you will be cared for and guarded 24 hours a day. Please escort the Avatar and his friends out. They are no longer welcome here. My dad changed his mind. Well, we better get out of here before your dad changes his mind again. Aang had his earthbending teacher at last, but he and his friends would endure so much before they reached Ba Sing Se, the Earth Kingdom's last remaining stronghold. They also had to contend with the Zula, who pursued them relentlessly. Indeed. Ironically, I have Azula to thank for reuniting me with Zuko. We join with the Avatar in his friends against her. Although, I don't enjoy the memory of her attack. In the desert, they finally reached a great library built to contain all the world's knowledge. 
which contained an amazing secret. One Saka was certain would turn the war in their favor. But this came at a great cost. Appa was taken from them, causing them to lose both Aang's dearest companion and their ride. Still, they pushed forward to Ba Sing Se, where a terrible sight greeted them. Having kept Mei and Tai Li at bay as long as they could, Saka and Katara finally escaped the drill. Then Toph joined them in the fight as they attempted to sabotage the drill. Aang was ready to destroy the drill with one massive blow, but Azula appeared and tried to stop him. Azula again. I'll have to face her if I want to destroy this drill. So, our paths cross again, Avatar. Fate is just begging me to capture you and take you to my father. I need for once. Ah! They saved Ba Sing Se, or so it seemed at the time and Aang resolved to find Appa. But then they met a dark and mysterious stranger. All right, perhaps not dark, but she was quite strange. This was Judy, their guide. Even stranger was that their pleas to warn the Earth King about the escalating war were ignored by all they met. Aang and his friends decided to crash a state dinner to speak to him. Soon, they were arrested by Long Feng, the Earth King's closest advisor and head of the mysterious Dai Li. But at least they knew who their enemy was. So much for them to face all at once. And still, hey. Aang couldn't lose hope that he would find his friend, Appa. And he was determined to do so with the help of his friends. Lee's got us surrounded. Uh, you think we can outrun them? You had your chance, Avatar. Now prepare to fall before the Dai Li.
miss you, buddy. The Avatar and his friends had been reunited with Appa, but they were faced with a difficult choice. Katara and Toph were in rare agreement that Longfang and the Dai Li were too powerful to face. However, Sokka was adamant that they return to the Earth King. The Avatar reminded them that with Appa back, the Dai Li could not stop them from reaching the Earth King and telling him the truth about the war, as well as Long Feng's sinister conspiracy. And with that, the Avatar and his friends flew to the palace in the hope of changing the fate of Ba Sing Se and the war with the Fire Nation. That. It's a giant trail made by the Fire Nation to break through your walls. I can't believe I never knew. I can explain this, Your Majesty. This is nothing more than a construction project. Really? Perhaps you can explain why there's a Fire Nation insignia on your construction project. Well, it's imported, of course. Dai Li, arrest Long Feng. I want him to stand trial for crimes against the Earth Kingdom. Confident that the Earth King was finally in charge, Aang flew to the Eastern Air Temple to find the Guru Patik, who he hoped could help him achieve control over the Avatar State. Indeed, Patik tried to help. He'd been trying to help all along with his bending challenges, but in the end, his teachings were in conflict with Aang's feelings for Katara. Sensing that Katara was in danger, no. Aang left Patik before he could unlock his last no. chakra he would no longer be able to enter the Avatar state at all. And Katara was in great danger, as was the whole Earth Kingdom. She rushed to warn a Kyoshi warrior that Zuko and Iroh were in Ba Sing Se, only to realize the warrior was Azula. Azula had been unmasked. She felt the time had come to act. While trying to escape from the palace, Zuko and Katara were captured. Putting aside their differences, the Avatar teamed up with Iroh to rescue Zuko and Katara from the crystal catacombs where they were being held. Well, Prince Zuko, what will you choose? Will you continue to listen to our foolish uncle, or rejoin the Fire Nation and regain your honor? I... I thought you changed! I have changed. to get out of here. I'll hold them off as long as I can.
Toph decided to start scamming the scammers who were taking advantage of people in the city. It came to a head when Toph decided to scam the city itself and enlisted Katara to help her. Katara and Toph were imprisoned, and while Aang and Sokka searched for them, eventually escaped. They didn't have long to relax, because shortly after they all reunited, they were attacked. This guy again? Who is he? Why is he attacking us? I don't know. But we gotta keep moving. We have to stop him. I got it! The perfect name for that guy? Combustion Man! Good job, Sokka! Now let's get out of here before Combustion Man catches us! See? It fits so well! The Avatar and his friends flew to an uninhabited island to rendezvous with the invasion force, which would be led by Sokka's father, Akoda. And they arrived early, which gave them a chance to get some rest. The Avatar, however, allowed his apprehension of the coming conflict to get the best of him. With the help of his friends, however, he was finally able to calm his nerves and get some sleep. Hakoda and the warriors from the Southern Water Tribe finally arrived, along with Earth Kingdom warriors and some yes. unexpected and unorthodox allies. And together, Whoa! they prepared to set into motion their plan to invade the Fire Nation when it would be at its most vulnerable, on the day of Black Sun. Excuse me. Aang entered the Fire Nation's royal palace in search of the Fire Lord, but he was nowhere to be found. In their search, they stumbled upon a hidden underground bunker. Thinking the Fire Lord might be hiding there, they entered the bunker. Makes me wish we found the Fire Lord first. Hey! Let me introduce you to my new friends.
Oh, it sounds like the fire bending's back on. I can't believe we fell for that. Now it's too late. Maybe it's not too late. The eclipse is over, but I can face the Fire Lord anyway. The Fire Lord knew we were coming this time. We thought we had surprise on our side, but we didn't. It just wasn't our day. What we need to do now is go help our friends. I guess you're right. You'll have another chance. I know you will. The eclipse over, the Fire Nation regained its bending powers and returned to attack. Aang and his friends were ready to stand and fight. No. But Hakoda had another idea. Knowing that victory over the Fire Nation would not come that day, mm -hmm. the adults of the invasion force agreed to surrender in <laughs> order to allow the Avatar, his friends, and the youngest of the group to escape. So Aang led the young ones to one of the few safe places left, the Western Air Temple. Hey, listen. Zuko appeared unexpectedly, claiming to have had a change of heart and offering to help. But after all that had happened, no one trusted him. No one, that is, except Toph, who knew Aang needed a firebending teacher. So she left under the cover of night to find Zuko and bring him back. Zuko, but he accidentally burned her feet, causing her to flee. As she returned to the air temple, the ground began to shake. This combustion man, he's after us again! This guy just won't quit! He will if me and my trusty boomerang have something to say about that! I know how to get an angle on him. Yeah, boomerang! Oh, boomerang. With that battle, Prince Zuko had finally proven himself. Not only to the Avatar and his friends, but to himself. He had come to realize that no one can be given honor. One must earn it for oneself. And at that moment, he chose to do what was right. To play his part in ending the war. The Avatar himself came to a realization. My nephew was meant to be his firebending teacher, because more than most, 
Prince Zuko knew how easy it was to hurt the people you love, while the others were less certain of Zuko's change of heart. They followed the wishes of the Avatar, and he joined their group. Soon, Zuko and Aang went to the Temple of the Sun Warriors, where they danced with dragons. They learned the real secret of firebending, that it is energy and life. Sokka, meanwhile, became increasingly concerned about his father and the others taken prisoner by the Fire Nation. Zuko said they were likely being held at a terrible place called Boiling Rock and attempted to dissuade Sokka from doing anything rash. But of course, now it was Sokka who felt he needed to regain his honor. Zuko knew how he felt and offered to help. Sokka and Zuko went to Boiling Rock Prison to rescue Sokka's father, Hakoda. There, Sokka is reunited with Suki. Together, the trio and some new friends concocted an escape plan. However, Hakoda's sudden arrival at the prison not only scuttled the plan, it made things worse. The riot Sokka plan worked, and they were close to escaping with the Warden as their hostage. Just then, Azula and Tai Li appeared and attacked them on top of gondolas suspended over a vast chasm. Looks like Azula brought a friend. This is a rematch I've been waiting for. Me too. Poor Zuzu. Always so angry. But did you listen? They're about to cut the line! Then it's time to leave. Their peace after the daring rescue at the Boiling Rock was short-lived, as the Fire Nation soon drove the Avatar and his friends from the Western Air Temple. Not long after, the Avatar and his friends arrived on Ember Island, where they saw a quite sensational play. Let's just skip over that part, shall we? Hmm? As you wish. Soon after the theatrical diversion, a worried Avatar left his friends without a word. Seeking a non-violent resolution to the conflict, Aang spoke with the past avatars. As Katara, Sokka, and Toph searched for the missing Aang, 
Zuko went looking for his uncle Iroh, who'd escaped imprisonment. He found Iroh, along with other members of the Order of the White Lotus, at Ba Sing Se. There, they steeled themselves for a climactic battle with the invading Fire Nation army. And so the Order of the White Lotus liberated Ba Sing Se. But the Avatar would still have to face and defeat Fire Lord Ozai for the war to be truly won, and for balance to be restored to the world. An ancient giant lion turtle shared the wisdom needed for the Avatar to accomplish this, but this was no guarantee that he would prevail. Raged, Sokka, Suki, and Toph did their part to sabotage the Fire Nation airships. Meanwhile, Zuko and Katara went to confront Azula, who they found had become unhinged. To settle their conflict once and for all, Zuko invoked an Agni Kai, and Azula agreed. Sorry, but you're not going to become Fire Lord today. I am. You're hilarious. But fine. Let's settle this. Just you and me, brother. The showdown that was always meant to be. Agni Kai! did it. Despite all she's done, I feel sorry for Azula. Together, Zuko and Katara defeated Azula. It was now all up to Aang, who had to confront Fire Lord Ozai, stop him, and end the war. After all the failed attempts to find you, now the universe delivers you to me as an act of providence. We don't have to fight. You have the power to stop what you're doing. You are right. I do have the power. I have all the power in the world! Yeah! 
can't take my power! You can't! No, I'm not going to end it like this. Even with all the power in the world, you are still weak! In the era before the Avatar, we bent not the elements, but the energy within ourselves. To bend another's energy, your own spirit must be unbendable, or you will be corrupted and destroyed. What did you do to me? I took away your firebending. You can't use it to hurt or threaten anyone else ever again. Soon after, Zuko became the Fire Lord, ending 100 years of war and Aang had truly become the Avatar. Balance was restored. That won't do at all. Even as happy endings go, that was a bit... Uh, predictable. But that is how these events came to a close. Perhaps, but that's not how my play will end. I need to send the audience out the door chattering madly, wildly conjecturing, imagining. Peace is what many in your audience have only imagined their entire lives. Now they have it. Is that not enough? That's my point. They already have that. But I must give them something new, fresh. A cliffhanger. A... a twist! <gasps> twist upon twist! Like? For example... Appa and Momo will speak, if only to each other. Audience love talking animals. And Aang, he's taken the Fire Lord's power. But perhaps, just perhaps, he also inherits the Fire Lord's long, lustrous hair. For all the power of the Avatar, he just can't do anything with his hair. Oh! And as for the new Fire Lord, with all due respect to your nephew, the real eye-opener would be to make Katara the new Fire Lord. Oh, that'd get the crowd, and a few critics I know, really talking. Why, I can see it now. The Ba Sing Se players would be acclaimed throughout the land. But were you not striving for more historical accuracy? Oh, you dear man. How about I leave you to making your delicious tea, and you let me handle the theater? Now I really must dash off. I have what you might call a little bit of drama bending to do. <laughs> Thank you so much for regaling me with your thrilling tales. Fear not, gentlemen. I will do you and the Avatar proud. Ta-ta! I somehow doubt that production will do anyone proud. On the positive side, I believe she has revealed to me an 86th Jing. I'd rather drink poisonous tea from the white jade bush than go through that again. Ha! <sighs> <sighs> the tea's gone cold. Allow me to make a fresh pot.
Water. Earth. Fire. Air. Long ago, the four nations lived together in harmony. Then everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Only the Avatar, master of all four elements, could stop them. But when the world needed him most, he vanished. I believe Aang can save the world. She'll be here any minute. But this is our pie show day, Iroh. <laughs> Do not worry, my friend. The director assured me this would only take a few minutes of our time. Just to confirm some details. And there she is. Gentlemen, so pleased to make your acquaintance. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Zong Ying, the director of the Ba Sing Se Players. Welcome to the Jasmine... As you know, the Ember Island Players production of The Boy in the Iceberg was said to have contained certain, let us say, Historical inaccuracies. Ugh. And given that the great former general's dear, dear nephew is about to become the new Fire Lord, well, it seemed obvious that the play needed a refresh. I am so proud of Zuko. Ah, yes, yes, as we all are. Which is why I wish to mount a brand new production. And who better to tell the tale, to set the record straight, if you will, than you three, who have... Seen it all! You could say that! No, I have. And I did. And so, I entreat you, my dear, eminent, respected, wise, and, dare I say, more than a little handsome gentleman, to lavish upon me the tale of the Avatar from the beginning. From the beginning? If you please. I will listen and record for all posterity the real, true story. Not one embellishment. Not one! This should take no time at all, as you will speak freely, without interruption, certainly not from me. I will be quiet as a lizard mouse. <laughs> Quieter. Mm-hmm. Ha-ha! <sighs> Very well. Allow me to begin. People often talk about the calm before the storm. But this story begins with the storm before the calm. And, oh, storm before the calm. How clever. My, don't you have a silver tongue? Do go on. Lizard mouse, lizard mouse. Thank you. Now, as I was saying, the storm before the calm. Caught in a storm, the Avatar found himself overwhelmed, as did Appa, and they plunged into the ocean. The Avatar and his bison remained in the ice for 100 years, until Katara and her brother Sokka discovered him. How could this boy in the iceberg possibly be the long-lost Avatar? At first, Sokka was suspicious. But Aang's charm and true nature eventually won him over. The three became fast friends, and Aang was welcomed by the people of the Southern Water Tribe. But soon, 
Aang would make a discovery that would set him back on the path to his destiny as the Avatar. Katara sprang a trap, endangering the village. Told to leave the village, Aang flew away on Appa, but saw that the trap had attracted a Fire Nation ship. He had to get back and help them. Aang returned to the village and faced Zuko. He surrendered so the Fire Nation would leave the village alone. Taken to Zuko's ship, Aang soon manages to escape imprisonment. to fight. I am Zuko, son of Ursa and Fire Lord Ozai, prince of the Fire Nation and heir to the throne. And you will be my prisoner. I've lost. Katara. Hey, Sokka. Thanks for coming. Well, I couldn't let you have all the glory. <laughs> After escaping from Prince Zuko, the Avatar excitedly flew his friends to the Southern Air Temple, the home he had run away from 100 years prior. He felt shame for abandoning his old mentor, Gyatso, and for running away from his responsibility. Aang entered the Air Temple Sanctuary, expecting to meet someone who could help him on his Avatar journey. Instead, he found Momo, a flying lemur who became Aang's friend. Upon exploring the air temple further, Aang made a startling discovery no. and was forced to confront a dark truth. All the air nomads, including Aang's friends and his mentor, had been wiped out by the Fire Nation. He became overwhelmed and entered the Avatar state, which would have led to disaster if not for Katara. And that's when Aang faced the hardest truth of all. He was the last of his people. The last airbender. He felt he needed the advice of the Avatar who'd come before him, Roku, but didn't know how to get it. So Aang and his friends continued on their journey.
Soon after his return, Ang, Katara, and Sokka were captured by the Kyoshi warriors, thinking the heroes were Fire Nation spies. But once Ang proved he was the Avatar, he got royal treatment and a legion of fans. The day started peaceful enough, but the quiet was shattered when Prince Zuko and his soldiers arrived and attacked the village. Sokka and Suki sprang into action to help. Oh no! Hmm. <laughs> Stop hiding behind these little girls, Avatar. They can't save you. I'm here, Zuko. So, you came out of hiding. Smart move, Avatar. Honor. Place. These people got their town destroyed trying to protect me! It's not your fault. Let's get out of here. Zuko will leave Kyoshi Village to follow us. <laughs> the Avatar and his friends then traveled to Omashu in search of his old friend, Boomi. There, they were greeted by a wizened old man, who... Hey! Who are you calling wizened? <clears throat> As I was saying, the king of Omashu imprisoned Katara and Sokka. Aang would have to pass three tests and win a duel if he wanted to save his friends. Then, the king posed a final question. What is my name? Aang realized the king was none other than <laughs> Boomy himself. It was all for a purpose. Aang had to learn that you don't just wake up one day, especially after a hundred years, ready to challenge Fire Lord Ozai. But Aang had a challenge for you, did he not? Oh yes, indeed he did. Yippee! One we faced together. Get on this. Aang entered the spirit world for the first time. There, a large dragon showed him a temple devoted to Roku. Aang knew he had to go there. Listen to me! Not in the mood to talk, I guess! 